what looks like a large elephant trunk is in fact stalactite structures called rusticles. These are formed when iron-eating bacteria attacks the steel in sunken ships. the centre hose pipe but the centre anchor chain would have come through. We're now approaching the forward railings of the very prow of the Titanic and we can see more rusticles draped over those railings and a small little bamboo coral pointing forward. We're now looking into the weld where the huge center anchor still lies in its place. Just above it you can see the crane that would have lifted that out. Age is taking its toll on the shipwreck and the railings are starting to collapse outwards. Coming into view as we travel along the port or left side we can see one of the anchor chains the distance on the right hand side some mooring bollards and a very large bronze capstan comes into view still glistening and shining after 111 years on the seabed the anchor chains are now moving there towards the windlasses where they would have pull them back down into the chain locker at the bottom of the ship. A second bronze capstan comes into view and on top of that is a memorial plaque that was left on a previous expedition in the past. Over on the Left hand side, we can see the entrance into hold number one. This whole deck area is known as the focal deck. What looks like a wall there in the background is, is actually a breakwater or wave break, as it's described. This would have deflected large waves that were breaking over the bow of the ship and deflect them away to the sides. steam winches that would have been used to lift items and objects out of the holes. And there's a much better view of the wave break.
And now we approach the foremast or main mast of the ship, which has completely collapsed, lying across more steam winches. When I first dived on the ship in the summer of 2000, the main mast lay right across the well deck onto the bridge. And now, as we can see, it has completely collapsed. It's very sad to see it like this. Looking down into the well deck, we can see the doorway that would have stepped out onto the crow's nest. The crow's nest where Frederick Fleek, the lookout, spied the iceberg. The bell would have hung just above the doorway on that hook. We're now traveling across the well deck. One of the electric cranes rising up above towards the bridge area going over across B and A deck the whole area of the bridge on the Titanic was made out of timber and it got destroyed in the sinking and all that is left in that whole area is the bronze tally motor. The tally motor was a pump that the main wheel was attached to and when the wheel was turned it's, it helped the rudder change direction. This whole area is completely collapsed and destroyed. The memorial plaques go back over 20 years or more. The three on the left hand side are actually ones that I left and my dives in 2000 and 2005. And they are from Ireland, they are from Belfast and they are from Cove, Titanic's last port of call. Just there on the left hand side you can see a bent shiny bar, that bar we believe is the remains of the linkage that brought the steering wheel connection to the forward steering wheel in the bridge. This great shot gives us a whole panoramic view of that area. behind the telemotor here is in fact and what looks like three windows are actually dummy windows that were placed into the navigation uh, and chart room and um, the pilot's room they actually let light in from the chunking area that left air ventilate down On the left there is the remains of Captain Smith's cabin, which is completely destroyed now. It was quite intact when the wreck was first discovered in 1985. But nature is shaking its toll. We're now approaching the casing number one, the funnel, where the funnel number one was, which would have gone all the way down to the border rooms and the uh, uptakes for the smokestacks. water tank behind that looms into view and again the remains of more 